Hello, and welcome to episode 103 of Things I've Learned from Barry Harris. And today I thought um, I would talk about just giving a slightly different perspective on creating chord melodies. So for instance, as guitar players, we know chord melody is usually just uh, filling in the harmony behind, uh, underneath the melody on top. And what we generally tend to do is, as guitar players, is we have one particular way of doing it, and that's it, and we're satisfied, and we moved on. We move on from that. But what I think I wanted to focus on today was not to be satisfied with just doing like everybody else does, and maybe uh, using these chords. In the same way we, we're creative with our single note lines, we have to be creative with our chording, too. Uh, I'm, included, I'm including myself in this because I have a tendency to play very similar things that everybody else plays, and I'm really trying to get out of that habit. So maybe this will be helpful to some of those people, too, who are in that spot. Uh, the song I thought I'd use for an example is Darn That Dream, and specifically just the first two bars of Darn That Dream, which are G major, and then it says in the book it goes to B flat minor to E flat 7. So... Let's just say, actually it's the first bar, it's not even the first two bars, but let's just say, um, and the melody is going to be, so the first two notes are for the G major, and the last note is for the B flat minor to E flat 7, or some people just play E flat 7. So I would say of the 10,000 and obviously I haven't watched them all, but the 10,000, I could probably guess, the 10,000 chord melodies of Darn That Dream, you're going to see something very similar to this. So there's nothing wrong with that. That's a pretty chord melody. That's fine. It's just that everybody does that. Everybody, including myself. I, I'm guilty of it also. So the, the, the things I'm telling you are, I don't, I don't hold myself above it. I realize I do it myself also. But we got to break out of that. We have to figure out a, a way to break out of that. So we have to say to ourselves, the first chord is G major. So we have to know our G6 diminished scale. And we have to know it all sorts of ways. We have to know everything about it. Thirds, triads, uh, drop twos, drop threes, drop two, drop four. All the elevator, as Thomas would say. Um, we have to know it. We have to know all that. Contrary motion, we have to know all, everything like that. We also have to know the same thing for the second note, which I, I like to play E flat 7. I go directly to E flat 7. But instead of playing, which everybody plays, and like I said, it's not, there's not anything wrong with that. It's just that the fact that everybody plays that should make you not want to play that. Everybody else plays that, but let, let everybody else play it that way. You should play it a different way. So let's talk about it for a second. G6 diminished scale. There's our G6 diminished scale. So we have the fifth and the tonic. So now we can harmonize that any way we want. We can harmonize it with thirds. And the same thing with the E flat seven. There's thirds for E flat seven. Because E flat seven diminished scale is, which would be a combination of E flat seven and F diminished, eight note scale. So in the same way, G major six diminished is a G six, and then an A diminished. This is an E flat seven diminished scale, which is an E flat seven, but also an F diminished, and there's your eight note scale is really beautiful which means when you're playing thirds you get this which is a second so it's really pretty so now suppose we started this song and we said watch wow. but the seconds are really pretty so I... isn't that pretty already you have a different a different thing now it comes it's in that chord but we're gonna go someplace else with it you'll see so now let's do triads really pretty too if we did everything in triads what if we did everything in just drop twos also pretty you know 
what if we did um, just some single notes and maybe then a drop too? So we'll say. Now I did drop twos up the d diminished scale. So maybe I'll do drop twos up the um, six diminished. Also. That's really beautiful too. So not only are we adding to the, to the harmony, but we're also adding to the melody. And again, I'm not saying any of these ideas are fantastic, but just at least now you're dealing with a different thing. You're not just dealing with that same set of sounds. Here's this drop three G major seven to this drop three uh, B flat minor seven sus or whatever, the same chords we play all the time. It's important to see all these. So as a creative person, we should be interested in how do I how do I um, squeeze the most out of this lemon, and this is the way I would suggest to do it. So you should know for the very first part of that tune, your G six diminished scale, and you should also know your E flat seven diminished scale. Now, if you don't know those scales, then you should practice them on from every degree in terms of doing thirds. So you have to know your G six and thirds. <laughs> is really pretty. So watch, what if I just did these in thirds? Let's see. That was pretty. So that was thirds in um, G6 diminished and then thirds in flat seven diminished. Wait, I'm going to try that. That one up. That should be B flat seven diminished. Uh, no, what's it? That's it. So also B flat seven diminished, which comes after that. But it just shows you. Now I have a different thing. I've never heard anybody play that. And I'm not saying that it's the greatest thing in the world, but at least it's different and it's musical. How about if we did triads? I mean, that's beautiful also. Um, and you know, you don't have to do just a drop two to a drop two or a triad to a triad, but let's try drop twos. Let's do drop two. Oh, let's see. Um. Those are also pretty. We did those before. But what about um, um, just changing it up, maybe doing some contrary motion on the second thing? So let's do. Um, uh, we'll do triads up. Let's see. Now we now I did some triads up and then contrary motion and then I mean we didn't even do like uh, um, um, how would we do uh, oblique motion where we keep this note the same. So we'll do some thirds. That was pretty. But see, this is what I mean. So you work a couple of things out. Maybe some of them aren't the greatest sounding in the world, but at least you're trying. So if there's any point to this, it's just that as an as a improviser and as a musician, you should want to try to just play something different than the other person is playing. And then you know what happens? It has this domino effect. Because if people start seeing uh, videos of guitar players chord melody, making a chord melody of Darn That Dream, and now you don't see 
this beginning where people are doing this. And if you don't see that and you start to see something different, it will inspire you to not play that also. And to say, you know what, let me let me look at the let me see who I am on this G major to E flat seven. Let me see who I am as a musician, as a as a guitar player, to create a chord melody. Let me just see who I am, where I lie on this level. You know, where where am I? Am I just gonna copycat the last person or am I gonna try to make something else of it? And again, as I point out, I, this is a video for myself also. This is to try to motivate myself from being, um, from just uh, uh, taking the easy way out and always playing the same type of chord melody things that everybody else does. We gotta, we have to really push ourselves to be individual. You know, and I think that that's what Barry's system, especially his scales of chords, besides his single note ideas, his scales of chords really allow us to be, we really can find ourselves within those scales. So anyway, just a little short video about maybe motivating all of us um, to really work on our chord melodies and not just copy. So until next time, thanks.